The instructional video is for all models, both the digital as well as the spring timer. Congratulations on having the Showtime Rotisserie and Barbecue. This machine was developed by Ron Popeil, who recently won an award as one of the 25 people who changed the way we eat, cook, and think about food. Try a wide variety of foods with the Showtime Barbecue and Rotisserie. Chops, leg of lamb, turkey, pork roast, hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken burgers, veggie burgers, they're all delicious. This is the unit assembled. The glass door is pulled down by the knobs on the top. Put it in the under position when you're loading food and unloading food. This is the drip tray and grate cover. The spit wheel assembly. And in the back behind the heating element is a heat reflector. It easily comes out and you'd want to wash this once in a while. Just be sure it's always in the unit when the unit is in operation. To replace it, put it in behind the heating coil very simply, let it fall into place. This is the spit wheel assembly. It goes in and first into a rest area and then back into one of the cooking areas, A or B. The grate cover goes on top of the drip tray. They can go in either way, as shown here. Again, never operate the unit without the drip tray and the grate cover in place. To attach the door on the front, first put the pin in the right side. Then gently lift up and insert the pin in the left side and let it down. That's all you do to put the door in place. It easily removes for cleaning. Now it's your turn, Ron. You tell them about the spit wheel assembly. This is the spit loading base that comes with every unit. I'm going to set that on there like so, and I'm going to take the other gear wheel, and I'm just going to match it up. Once they're matched up, you press down, and it's ready to go into the rest area. Now, let me explain some of the inner parts of the machine here. Over here is the rest area. Over here is the A position, and then we have the B position. Now, and in the back, we can see the motor gear. That's what makes everything operate. Now let's go back to the A position. The A position, and I'm going to set it first in the rest area, and then into the A position. All foods work in that A position. Now it's basically for larger foods, because if you decide to go to the B position, you lift up, it falls into place, and that will do smaller foods. I'll do that once again. The A position, does large foods. The B position does smaller foods. It's as simple as that. Once the food is in, you lift the window up, you set it, and you forget it. Don't take set it and forget it literally. It's only valid if you have read and followed all the instructional material. Notice that we have half hour increments going around the unit. It's a three hour timer and it turns off automatically. Now you'll notice down the bottom here, it's in the normal rotation. That's right in the middle. That's the heat on and the rotisserie is spinning. If I move it to pause to sear, that allows the heat to stay on, but the rotisserie is not working. It sears all your foods. Of course, if you move it over to no heat rotation, your food is done already and you turn it to no heat rotation for just five minutes on the timer. That's when the heat is off, but the rotation continues. That'll allow you to 
to let your food rest with all the juices permeating, marinating inside and outside. We'll go back to the normal position. If you own the Platinum Edition with digital controls, it simply works like this. Now we have the hour button right here. I'm going to touch it and we have one hour and you can see the digital light right there and it will start in just a couple of seconds time. Above it is the minute button and I will give that a press a couple times and you can add on your minutes. The left side is minus minutes and we can take away minutes if we so desire. And of course, we have the off button down over here. That turns it off. Although your machine stops automatically when you're using it. If I wanted to just touch the button again, you will notice that the rotisserie spins a little bit each time I touch it. So you can position anything in there anywhere you want. Now the function button on the top allows you to do the normal rotation. That's heat with the rotation. Of course, I'm going to go to no heat rotation over here. And I'm going to give it uh, a couple of minutes on no heat rotation. Now what is no heat rotation? No heat rotation is what it says. There's no heat, but the rotisserie is spinning around. Now the reason I invented that was that I know that when food is done, not everyone is ready to sit down at the table. And so this will keep your food spinning around with the juices flowing, and it'll keep it hot for about a half an hour's time. You never can get those people to sit down at the table when you want them to. And the last button on the side over here is pause to sear. And I'm going to touch the function button again. And what will happen here now is the rotisserie stops, but the heat remains on. It will allow you to sear your food, especially when you're doing steaks and lamb chops in the basket. I'll turn it off, and that's all there is to it. Now let me show you how to put the meat on the spit rods. It's done the same way with both models. I'm going to take the meat, I'm going to set that on the platform like that, and I'm just going to drive it through like so. Beautiful. I'll put this on one side, and then the other side, snap it down, and then I'll go right into the rest area. And then I'll just slide it over. Next item is just slide it back, and it's ready. Pick it up, set it. Turn it on, bring it. And now Ron's going to show us an easy way to tie chickens. You get a bunch of food ties with your machine. Cut that off. Over here I have one wrap around, and over here I have the second wrap around. Now, Jan, I'd like to show the folks how to tie a chicken another way using only one tie. I'm going to take a tie here, and I'm just going to make it a little smaller just by making a little knot in here like so and trimming it like that. Now, the first thing I do here with the chicken is always turn the chicken over on the breast with the wings away from you. I'm going to take that chicken tie, and I'm going to wrap it around one wing and then the other wing. Give it a twist and it locks the legs in. Once the legs are locked in, I'll turn it back over again, and I will put one wing on this side and one wing on the other side. Back over again with the breast on the right side. I'm going to grab my rotisserie rods here, and I'm just going to grab the legs with my other hand to keep them together, and I'm just going to angle it down like so, and slide it through. Set it on the platform over here, like this. Put the uh, top gear wheel in place. I'll match it up, snap it down, and I will then put it in the rest area. I will center the chicken, slide it back, bring the window up, set it. It is highly unlikely, but if you should see or smell smoke, it's because the food is rubbing against the heating element. This indicates that the meat or poultry is too big or wasn't tied properly, or the food is off-center, not sided on the spit rods. If this occurs, 
Turn off and unplug your machine. Do not open the glass door. Let it cool down. Then trim or retie your food tightly. And be sure that the food is centered on the spit rod so it always rotates without touching the heating element. Over here I have the spit loading base. I'm going to take the spit rod assembly and just place it right on like so. I'll take the two chive chickens here and all I'll do is drop it on like that. And I'll take the second one and basically do the same thing. Take this and slip it on like one side and then the other. Snap it down. I'll move this over like so, get this out of the way, slide the chickens over, and I'll take a little of this and just sprinkle that on there. Nice. That's going to be a really beautiful. Then I will take it and set it in the rest area, slide it back into position, lift up the window, turn it on, set it, and forget it. Here I have the basket, and of course I have the lid over here. I have four different salmon steaks here. I'm going to take and place one over here and one on this side, and I'll just mesh it in and just slide it over. I'll do this side over here like so. This is pretty darn simple. A child can do it. I have some lemon, and I'll touch that over here, both sides. Sprinkle a little dill on here. Kind of looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. And I'll take the bar over here, and I'm just going to stick it in one side. And it's very important that the fish does not move around on the inside. Now, over here, I'm going to uh, take my platform, and I'll set the unit on like so. Take this over here, and uh, just match it up. Match it on one side and then the other side and just slide it down. So it's as simple as that. I'll put the lid on. This is pretty simple. Snap it on. Take it. Set it in the rest area. Slide it back. Lift this up. Set it. And forget it. That's all you do to do your work. Yeah. this and this, and this and this, or you have this ring matching up with this ring, and this over here matching up with this over here. This side over here will go in there, and you use the spring side over here, and it comes out over here, and that kind of locks the food down. Over here I've got the platform, I'll set it down, and I'll put this on it like so. Now over here we have these two. Of course, this guy here matches up with that one over there. All I'm going to do is set it down like so, and down it comes. Perfect. I take the lid, and I'll just slip the lid on like this, and you're ready to go. Important. Always close a basket cover tightly so food cannot move while rotating. Now. Here's how to make kebabs. First thing you do is set it in the rest area like so. Now, with every package you get all these shish kebab rods. Let me show you how to use them. You take the shish kebab and they're done over here. You just slip in one side on that side and then use the spring to in fact, that's it. It's as simple as that. I'll put it on one side like that and then just spring it in. You set it back into the unit, you set the window up, you turn it on, and that's all you do to do shish kebabs. And here's how to use the flavor injector. Mm -hmm. Suck up that juice, like a little lemon juice here. Then I'll take this and I'll jam it in. Just a little shot there. Stick a little shot over in here. Put a little shot down in here. A little shot in there, heats it all up. Huh? Then I'll just go to the spit rod over here, slide this in, and all I do is go down and just ram it through like this. 
I'll set it on the counter over here like that. I'll put the uh, fine thing on over here, snap it down, and lift it. I'll set it in, position it, slide it back. It's as simple as that. And then we just set it. And now, Ron shows how to tie a turkey. Now, over here, I've tied the wings one time, and I've also tied the wings. This keeps the wings nice and tight and close. Of course, you have to also tie the legs, and you just use a regular uh, square knot, which I'll use over here, and we'll tie it really good. Always use four strings when tying a turkey, two on the wings and two on the legs. If your turkey comes with a metal leg clip, you can use that too. Just undo one leg to thoroughly clean the turkey inside first. Then replace the leg in the clip. I'll clip the excess off like so. Next I'm going to turn it sideways and over here I'm just going to slide it down and all the way through. I'll set my platform on over here like this, okay? And there's my strip rod coming out and I'll just uh, lock it in lift it up and put it in the machine like this, slide it back, set the window up, turn it on, set it and forget it. And now Ron shows us how to make baby back ribs using the kebab rods. Note, the spring end is on the left, not the right, with the baby back ribs. Now, it's important that this side be on the left side and the right be on this side over here. So I'm just going to slide it in over here like so, and then I'll just squeeze these together, snap that in. Now, if you notice down over here, we have our ribs, and I've taken one on each side. It holds it like that now. It's going to take this side over here, and I'm just going to slip it in on one side and spring it on the other and just roll it like so, and just slip it in over here. Take it and slide it back. And now, while that's doing that, I'll barbecue it. gloves. I'm going to slip my glove on over here. And uh, I want you to know, though, you can use any kind of gloves that you may have in your house. And by the way, these gloves are, in fact, rubberized. Watch what I do here. I'm going to turn off my machine over here, and I'm going to slide this right under. The first thing I'm going to do is lift up and just take it out. It's as simple as that. Now, over here, I have my meat thermometer. You must check to see if, in fact, the meat is done. It's done. Good. I'll take the meat thermometer out and just slide it off. The chicken comes right off, and you are now ready to serve your chicken. Now here I have a piece of, beautiful piece of rose cream, and I'm gonna just uh, sprinkle some nice stuff on here, all over. Get some nice good spices on there, that's gonna be lovely. Huh? Is that pretty? I think so. Okay, now, since I have it like that, I'm gonna take the spit rod over here, and do not go in over here in the meat. That's beautiful meat. You don't want to do that. What you basically want to do, folks, is go in through this way. And so I'm just going to slide it through like so, and I'll just push it right through like that. I'll set it on the wheel like so. I'll put this on over here. It'll match up. I'll put it in the rest area. 
slide it in the middle, push it in the back, raise up the lid, set it, and forget it. Here we have a nine pound standing rib roast. It's been in for well over a couple hours now and it's just running smoothly. It's very important that, as you see, the bones on the left be on the left side and not on the right side so they could possibly hit the uh, gear, which causes everything uh, here to work. Here we have some beautiful beans and succotash. That'll be sensational. And by the way, as you can see, you can just put it on the top here. It stays on the top comes out beautiful. There are several accessories for your rotisserie and barbecue. Shown here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket. Here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket shown with two very large lobster tails and sea bass fillet. And then we have the speed basket. It fits in the forward position near the heating element. Great for steaks. Sears them well and keeps them juicy inside. Call the number on the screen to order. And now here are some cautions. Things to avoid when using your rotisserie and barbecue. Do not touch the glass on the top or the bottom. It's hot. When the glass is underneath, do not touch this. This is very, very hot. Don't touch the top, don't touch the back. Always very hot. Never use spray. Never use spray inside the machine. Don't touch this. This is very, very hot, OK? Never grab that. You'll burn yourself. Never touch the sides over here. This is important. Remember, always keep at least eight inches of space from any cabinet on the top, sides, and back. This is no. You're too close on this side, and you're too close up here. This is no. Hot. 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 Do not touch. Important. Keep out of the reach of children at all times. Don't let them reach up and touch it. Important, do not put charcoals or any foreign objects in the machine. Important, do not move rotisserie when it's hot or loaded with food.